postcards of Britain, typical and familiar images of its four very different countries. We're going to take you on a journey. You'll see some familiar sights, but many not so familiar. You'll see some of Britain's buildings and its countryside. There are many ways of enjoying a holiday in Britain. We'll show you some of the things there are to see and do. We'll tell you how to get about. And you'll have the chance to learn some useful language for your stay. Above all, we'll show you how to have a good time in Britain. Because this is... Visiting a foreign country can be confusing, even for an experienced traveller. This is your guide to where to go, how to get there, how to pay, where to stay, and what to say. London. Many visitors to Britain never get beyond it. So, on this tour, we stop first for a good look at London. But then we'll move on, because there's much more to Britain than just its largest city. From time to time, you'll be looking in on this couple as they travel round Britain. He's American, she's British. They'll give you the chance to pick up some useful English for your holidays. This sign means listen carefully. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland it's usually known as the UK, or just Britain. You can get to Britain by sea or by air from almost anywhere. Most visitors come by air, landing at London Heathrow or London Gatwick. Both airports have good links to the centre of London. The journey takes less than an hour. Airports are big and confusing places, aren't they? But there are plenty of people to help you, whatever you want to do. You can get information at the airport, make arrangements, or even book a hotel. If you're looking for luxury, there are the modern international hotels and the classic British hotels, famous for their personal service Action! and their elegance. But in areas like Earl's Court in West London and around the main railway stations, you can find smaller hotels, guest houses and bed and breakfast places. Not so grand and more suitable if you're on a lower budget holiday. But after a tiring flight to London, you might want to spoil yourself and spend your first night in one of the airport hotels, just a few steps from the plane. Hello, can I help you? Yes, we'd like to book a room, please. A double room? Yes, with a private bathroom. How many nights? Just tonight. Fine. If you'd like to sign here. It's room 1153, which is on this floor. I'll get a porter to bring your luggage to you. Okay, that's lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. After a night there, you'd be ready to take on London. London has three centres. The business centre, called the City, Westminster, where you find the Houses of Parliament and many of the sites of London. And the West End, which we'll look at later. That's the area for theatres and shopping, and is very popular with tourists. London has always attracted visitors. It has always been crowded, busy, full of life. Not the place to come to for a quiet rest. A sightseeing tour in an open-top bus is an excellent way to start your stay in London. To help you use normal buses, you can get bus maps from most underground stations. Timetables are shown on bus stops. If the stop is a request stop, you must put out your hand to stop the bus. Two to Leicester Square, please. That's two sixties, one pound twenty. That's one pound. 20 pence. Can you tell us when we get there? Yeah, OK, take a seat. Thanks. If you've got the money, you can always take a London taxi. When a taxi is free for hire, its sign will be lit up. Am 
much is that? 280, please. There's one, two, three pounds. Keep the change. Thank you very much. Thank you. People usually give the driver a 10 or 15% tip. Buried deep beneath the streets of London is the underground, or tube. Apart from the rush hour, it's a quick and easy way of getting around. There are tube stations all over, and trains are very frequent. When you go on the tube, you need to know which line to take, and which direction you're going. In every station, there's a map of the whole system, with a different colour for each of the lines. We're here, and we need to get to Marble Arch. So if we take the Bakerloo line northbound to Oxford Circus, change at Oxford Circus, get on the central line westbound to Marble Arch. Are you sure? Yeah. There's signs everywhere. We can't miss it. All right. I trust you. OK. You can buy tickets from a person at a ticket window or from machines where you just press for the type of ticket you want and where you're going. OK. We need an adult single to Marble Arch. Unfortunately, the longer a journey is, the more it costs. But you can buy something called a travel card. Once you've bought that, you can make as many tube and bus journeys in a day as you like, for free. Not as fast as the tube, but much more pleasant is to travel by river. Frequent river buses go from Westminster Pier, upstream as far as Hampton Court, and downstream to the Tower of London, Greenwich, and the Thames Flood Barrier. Boats go as far east as the Thames flood barrier. If the level of the Thames ever gets too high, walls can rise up from the riverbed to block off the water and so prevent the city from flooding. At the barrier, the boat turns round for the return journey to central London. Excuse me, do you know what this bridge is called? No, I'm sorry, I'm a stranger here also. It is, of course, Tower Bridge, the most famous of the bridges that cross the Thames and it can open to let big boats through. Attention please, the bridge will shortly be lifted. All members of the public must clear the centre section of the bridge immediately. Please watch out for moving pedestrian gates. Higher on please, clear the bridge. You can go inside the bridge and the original engine room is now a museum. The city, the financial centre of London, is much more interesting to walk around than you might think. Amongst the modern skyscrapers, it has many fine old buildings and some fascinating pubs. Dominating the city is St Paul's Cathedral, where Prince Charles was married and where you can often hear beautiful choral music. St Paul's was built by England's most famous architect, Sir Christopher Wren. It was started in 1675 and took 35 years to build.
Today, the city has new cathedrals and a different religion. The Stock Exchange and the London International Futures Market both have public galleries. You can go along any day, from Monday to Friday, to get a glimpse of how the financial world works. It's as a financial centre that London is most important. But what do you think of when you think of London? Pageantry and tradition? Quaint uniforms? Or do you think of the sights of London? And if you get lost in all this, you can always ask a police officer the way. Excuse me? Yes, can I help you? Can you tell me the way to the National Theatre, please? Yes. If you turn left, go along that street over there. Yeah. Until you get to the end, you'll see the bridge on the right-hand side. If you turn right, cross over the bridge, and you'll see the theatre on the left-hand side at the far side. You can't miss it. OK, great, thank you. London is very busy but it is possible to find peaceful places. One of its many parks, for instance. Kew Gardens, with its amazing variety of plants. Or one of the many stately homes and historic buildings in and around London. This place is sometimes peaceful during the week. It's a lock on a canal at Camden in North London. But at the weekends, it becomes a focus for street life of all sorts. The whole area becomes a weekend market, especially for clothes, curiosities and antiques. for this? Uh, that uh, would normally cost you about £25 in the shop, but I can let you have it for 15 I'll give you £10. 12 I've only got a £10 note. OK, I'll accept you for £10. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Would you like it wrapped? No, I'll take it like this. OK, right. thank you. Of course, bargaining like that is only done when buying antiques and second-hand goods. <laughs> Shopping in the West End. Many visitors come to London just for that. you'll find almost anything somewhere in London, from expensive luxury goods to the relatively cheap goods sold in markets all over London. Leadenhall is a food market. It's one of several markets in the city, the business area. Until 1974, there was a huge fruit and vegetable market at Covent Garden. 
Now the old market buildings have been transformed into a center for stalls, shops and restaurants. And it's a favorite spot for street performers. Nice to sit down. Yeah, I'm tired. Lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Strangers often begin by talking about the weather when they want to talk to each other. It's not that the British are so interested in their weather. It's a way of starting a conversation and meeting people. Time to phone home? That you can do by direct dialing or by dialing 155 and asking the international operator to help you, perhaps with a reverse charge call. International operator, can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to make a click call to, sorry, a reverse charge call to the USA, please. What area, please? San Francisco. What number, please? 366-750. I'm trying to connect you. Thank you. Hello, Mom. Yeah, it's me, Paul. Yeah, I'm in London. In London, you can try the cooking of almost every country in the world. Many restaurants and cafes do takeaway food. Perhaps the best known is the British fish and chips. A very simple dish, but something you must try. This old cafe in Greenwich specializes in pie and mash. That's another traditional dish, which consists of a pie, usually a meat pie, and mashed potato. It's simple but tasty, and it's cheap. The family who own the cafe have been making pie and mash for generations. Hello, can I help you? Hello, two pie and mash, please. What pies would you like? We've got cheese and onion, chicken, minced beef, or pasties. I'll have cheese and onion, please. Two cheese and onion, please. The meal is served either with gravy, that's a dark, meaty sauce, or a parsley sauce, which they call green liquor. Green liquor, please. Same for me, please. What would you like to drink? Coffee. A black coffee and a tea for me, please. Fine. I'll bring that over. Thank you. Thank you. If you ask for just a coffee or tea, you will usually get milk in it. So it's important to ask for a black coffee if you don't want milk in it. Whatever your taste or your budget, you can find the restaurant you're looking for in London. You might prefer something more like this. Thank you. We have the set menu here and the a la carte you can choose from here. Are you ready to order, madam? Yes, we'll have the set menu, please. And for your starter? Soup, please. OK. And for your main course? Chicken. And for dessert? Fruit, please. Thank you very much. And for you, sir? So, they chose the set menu. That's the fixed-priced meal, rather than the a la carte, where you choose from a wide variety of dishes which are individually priced. People usually leave a 10 or 15 percent tip, but check first whether or not service is included in the price. An experience not to be missed is a visit to a West End theatre. You can get tickets direct from a theatre or from a ticket agency. This place in Leicester Square gives very good value. You can buy tickets for various plays and musicals, but only on the actual day of the performance. The tickets are half price, and the commission charge is quite small. Can I help you? Yes, we would like two tickets for a show, please. What type of show would you like? A musical or a comedy or a drama? A musical. Would you like seats in the stalls or in the circle? What's the difference? The difference is that the stalls are downstairs, whereas the circle is upstairs. Like any capital city, London has a great many cultural venues. The Royal Festival Hall is one of a number of fine concert halls. There's a range of art galleries, from the great national collections to smaller, more unusual exhibitions. But the greatest cultural wealth of London is its museums. 
The Natural History Museum explains all aspects of animal life, from man to wild animals, and even right back to the dinosaurs. The British Museum is one of the largest and greatest in the world. Among its many treasures are wonderful collections from the far distant past. And exotic pieces from far distant places. There are also more unusual museums. At Madame Tussauds, you can see wax statues of the famous. If people lose their fame, their statues are melted down, and the wax is used for those whose fame is more recent. The original Madame Tussauds made death masks of those guillotined during the French Revolution. And if you're interested in the macabre, the London dungeon might be to your liking. If astronomy is your interest, there's the planetarium. For space travel, there's the space adventure. Adventurer, this is Control. You are to proceed on stage one, flight plan to the moon. Bon voyage. Control, this is Adventurer. Affirmative, we proceed stage one of flight plan. Entering Lunar Astro Flight Control Center. This is Lunar 5. London by night. After all that culture, you can always let your hair down in one of the many pubs, nightclubs or discotheques. When you've had enough of London, there's plenty more to see and do in the rest of Britain. And a good way to get about is by train. Something to look for is the Brit Rail Pass, which you can only buy in your own country. Once you've bought one, you can get free train travel anywhere in Britain. But if you want to buy an ordinary ticket at the station, you do it like this. Two tickets to Brighton, please. Do single or return? Single, please. First or standard class? Standard, please. When is the next train to Brighton? Two minutes past ten from platform 15. You will probably know about many of the popular places to visit in Britain. Places like York, Bath, Stratford, Oxford and Cambridge. We're going to take you on a journey to some other places. We'll start in the south of England. You're never far from a seaside resort in Britain. A resort like Brighton, just an hour's train journey due south from London. Some of Britain's resorts are remote and peaceful. Brighton isn't. It's a traditional seaside holiday town. On that highway at night Feeling all right All right Trouble going with the way out of sight You don't have to wonder why I don't leave this life just to cry When you see me coming round that corner You can call my name out loud Traveling late It's not always sunny at the seaside But there's plenty to see and do in Brighton One lovely feature is the lanes a maze of small old streets full of shops selling antiques, jewellery and curiosities of all kinds. The south coast towns attract people from all over the world for a reason other than a holiday. They have become centres for English language schools, both state and private. Arles Felco is an association that most of the best private language schools belong to. Membership means that the school meets the British Council's standards. Could anybody give me an example of a sentence with if? Yes, Sabina? If I see you, I'll say hello. If I see you, I'll say hello. Yes, that sounds very good. Yes, very nice. There are moments of peace and quiet in Brighton, but if that's what you're really looking for, Brighton is probably not the place for you.
about 150 kilometers west of Brighton, is Stonehenge. It was built almost 4,000 years ago. 80 of its huge stones, some weighing five tons, were transported all the way from West Wales, a journey of 400 kilometers over land and sea. But what was Stonehenge? The most popular view is that it was a temple associated with the Druids, an early British priesthood. These modern-day Druids still regard it as their cathedral. Stonehenge is probably much older than the Druids. Experts disagree over its purpose, but the most intriguing explanation is that it was a huge astronomical calendar, or computer. The stones were precisely placed to line up with the sun and moon at different times of the year. Whatever its purpose, Stonehenge has a magic, an attraction that still draws people to it. Stonehenge is the most famous, but by no means the only prehistoric site. Britain, especially the southwest of England, has many such sites, stone circles, hill forts and burial grounds. The present-day village of Avebury is surrounded by a huge stone circle, in fact the largest in Europe, and slightly older than Stonehenge. Close by is Avebury Manor, a stately home built in the 16th century. It's decorated throughout in the style of that time, down to the smallest details, and it's quite an active place. You can see people in 16th century costume doing, well, 16th century things. Take this glass into thy hands, and hold it to thy eyes. There, that's in more colours than a dyer can devise. You can have a go yourself. The British do seem to like dressing up and remembering the past. They also like to practice long-lost techniques that are completely useless. And thus, with the powder poured into the pan, the gun is primed. The lid of the pan is shut off, and we'll first draw our match from our left hand, place this into the jaws of this device, which is often known as a serpent or dragon. Right, go on now. Go. There she comes, ready? Good. Remember, it's a very difficult thing to do to shoot the longbow. There are no sights on it whatsoever. So it's all shot by pure instinct alone. Nearby is Hilperton on the Kennet and Avon Canal. It's a centre for canal boats, which you can hire by the week. You can cook, eat and sleep on the boats, and they're well equipped for simple living. Uh, your drinks come, it's there. You have your double bed here. As you know, this table folds down to make the double bed. And over in the corner there, you've got your television and stereo unit. And in the next compartment, we have the galley. There are over 3,000 kilometers of canals in Britain, and many of the different canals link up. There's a wide choice of companies that hire out boats all over the country. You don't need to worry if you're a complete beginner. What you need to know about canal craft is quickly learnt, and the boats are surprisingly easy to drive. One short lesson is all that's necessary. Mind your head. Here you have your rev counter, temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge and battery amp meter. To start the engine, straightforward, turn the ignition key, same as you would on a car. And then the stern here, you have your throttle and your steering. Now to go forward, straightforward forward, to come stern, this is straight back. Steering with the tiller bar. Canal boats go very slowly, just the right speed for the surroundings of the canals. These are largely unchanged since the canals were built 200 years ago as the first transport network for the Industrial Revolution. And it's the right speed too to see the landscape of England, much of which is still surprisingly rural. A canal boat gives you the chance to relax totally, a different pace of life 
with no telephone to answer or appointments to keep. You can also stop where you like and for as long as you like. Perhaps at a canal side pub for something to eat and drink. Hello, can I help you? Uh, two beers, please. Yes, sir. Sorry? This one? Yes, please. I'd like a pint or a half. Halves, please. Instead of asking just for beer, he should have asked for a pint or a half of bitter, or perhaps lager, a colder, fizzier beer. Do you serve food here? Yeah, we've got a restaurant which is through there. Or we've got bar mills which is salads, sandwiches, bread rolls, meat pies. Food in pubs varies from snacks to full meals and is usually very good value. Two halves of beer. There you go. Cheers. 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 Not far from the canal is Stourhead, one of Britain's many landscaped gardens open to the public. Stourhead is owned by the National Trust. The National Trust and another organisation called English Heritage preserve many of Britain's monuments, parks and areas of countryside for public use. Often they put on special events or festivals of theatre and music. Here it's a 1920s jazz garden party. It's that dressing up and nostalgia again. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We have a little Caribbean style thing for you now. It's a composition by, and it's a number entitled Caribana Queen. on our train and northwest to Wales, a land where everyone speaks English and some also speak the much older language of Welsh. It's a land of beautiful mountain scenery and music. It's a strange thing, but almost all Welsh people can sing well. The capital of Wales is Cardiff, but our first stop is Mahuntleth, a market town. Hello, oh, Richard. Hello. What sort of cheeses have you got? Many towns throughout Britain have a market at least once a week. On sale will be everything from fresh local food to clothes and materials. To there, roughly. Yeah, lovely, OK. That'll be fine. Mahuntleth also has a weekly auction of farm animals. <laughs> 40 kilometres further north is Port Merion, an intriguing place. It's a complete Italian hill town built by an eccentric Welshman who had a passion for Italian architecture. Inland from Port Merion is Snowdonia, a dramatic mountainous area that is a centre for outdoor holidays of the more energetic kind. Watch your hat. Watch your hat. Oh, it's windy. Chalk everywhere. 
Okay. As well as mountain climbing, Snowdonia is excellent for canoeing and walking. A useful base for the area is Better Sequoid, a charming town built from local stone that has many amenities for the visitor. A good place to stay in a town like this is a bed and breakfast. It might be a private house, a pub or a guest house. You can find bed and breakfasts all over Britain. They're cheaper than hotels and a good way to meet people. Hello. Hello. Have you got any vacancies, please? Yes, we have. For how many nights? Just for tonight. Yes. yes. Come on in and I'll good. show you. OK, thank you. This is the lounge. There's a television. This is nice. Yeah. And the dining room is through here. Great. If you'd like to follow me, I'll show you a room. The bathroom is just up here, right next to your bedroom. This is your room. What do you think? It's lovely. Hello. I'm Naomi. Breakfast is at half past eight. My husband's a wonderful cook. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Have you got those two on? Yes, I'll be ready in a minute. The breakfast you can expect will usually be three course. Cereals or fruit juice, followed by a full fried breakfast, often called a full English breakfast. That's sausage, bacon, eggs, beans, tomatoes and so on. To finish, there's toast and marmalade and, of course, tea or coffee. There you are, a full fried breakfast. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Sausage looks good. Oh, yeah. Mm. Four rivers meet at Bettersea Coid. These and the waterfalls nearby are typical of the fast flowing streams of Snowdonia. At the heart of this mountainous area is Snowdon, the highest mountain in Wales. A good way to see Snowdon is from the air, on a tourist flight from Carnarvon Airport. alternative to flying, or climbing, is to go on the small steam railway, which is now a hundred years old. Steam railways run privately by enthusiasts have become tourist attractions in many parts of Britain. A short journey back into England brings us to the Midlands, an area among other things important to Britain's industry. The Industrial Revolution in Britain was so early that many of the old factories, mills and other industrial plants are now of interest as museums. Right. What do you have now? This mine no longer produces coal. Several of the ex-miners now act as guides to show you round, explain how the mine used to work and to give you the feel of what it was like to be a miner in the early days. 
Just have a feel at the weight of that. Two hands, pick it up in two hands. Lift it right up. <laughs> now, how, how would you like to work with that on your shoulder all day long? On your hands and knees, drilling six foot holes in that cold? No, you wouldn't, no. would you? Right, so now when this chap... Another industrial museum is Beamish, in the northeast of England. As well as the old machinery, you can see the way ordinary people lived their lives earlier this century, in a town completely frozen in time. Beamish is just a few kilometres south of Hadrian's Wall, built by the Romans more than 1,800 years ago. You can still walk along parts of the wall and see excavations of the many Roman forts. It was the northernmost frontier of the Roman Empire and ran right across the north of England from coast to coast. At the eastern end of the wall are the cities of Newcastle and Gateshead, which face each other across the River Tyne. Tyneside itself is an old industrial area famous for its warmth and friendliness. There's lots to see, but we only have time to visit one place here, the Metro Centre in Gateshead, an enormous complex with no less than 43 restaurants and 350 shops. This jacket, can I try this on? Sure, the fit room's just over there. Right, thank you. Definitely not you. No? No. Right. That's the one. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Right. I'll take this one. How would you like to pay? Check, cash or credit card? Credit card, please. OK. You might find it useful to ask if the shop operates the retail export scheme. This means tax-free shopping. You fill in a form in the shop, which will enable you to claim back the 15% tax that you have paid. The Metro Centre really has a vast number of shops and services, but the most extraordinary thing about it is its indoor fun fair. on our journey, Scotland. The capital is Edinburgh, which we'll see in a moment. Many people's images of Scotland can be found at a Highland Games, a sports and cultural event found all over the north and west of Scotland. Edinburgh is one of Europe's finest cities that has hardly changed for centuries. Every year, for three weeks in late summer, the city is taken over by the arts. The Edinburgh Festival is the best known cultural festival in Britain. There's always an impressive program of music and theatre, some of which takes place in the streets. At the same time as the festival, you can also see the Edinburgh Tattoo, a colourful military display in the grounds of Edinburgh Castle.
Coming north out of Edinburgh, you cross the fourth bridge. The bridge is so long that it takes over four years to paint, by which time they have to start painting all over again from the beginning. The fourth bridge is on the main route to the Highlands, an area of outstanding beauty with a romantic past, and it's home to wildlife of all kinds. On the edge of a large nature reserve is Aviemore, the most important winter sports resort in Britain. Not far from Aviemore is a very deep lake which has an air of mystery. Its name, Loch Ness, Loch being the Gaelic word for lake. Below its surface lurks a monster. People swear they have seen it and photographed it. There's even an early film of the monster in motion. Monster watching goes back a long way. So do efforts to capture it, or at least prove scientifically that it exists. But Nessie, as the monster is called, is shy and refuses to play. This particular investigation, Operation Deep Scan, cost a million pounds. All it came up with was one unexplained echo that might have been a monster. Local bus tours to Loch Ness include a boat trip on the lake, a tour of Urquhart Castle, and a visit to the Loch Ness exhibitions. There you can find out the details of sightings of the monster. The first by Hugh Gray in 1933. In 1980. You can also see full-size models of some of the scientific investigations. The sweeping beam on the surf screen would suddenly flash at the turn. The operator would attempt to keep track of the contact. When successful, it was recorded on the second screen, showing both its strength... And there are shops selling local specialities, such as high-quality Scottish woolens smoked salmon and glass monsters. 250 kilometers south of Loch Ness is Glasgow, the largest city in Scotland and its main industrial centre. It's an interesting city and a city that works hard for the tourist. Its tourist information centre is particularly good. At the larger tourist information centres, you can buy local souvenirs, maps and guidebooks. You can book tours and get information of all sorts. You can even book accommodation there, not only in that area, but in other parts of Britain. Yes, we operate a system called Book a Bed Ahead, which means that we can uh, book a reserve accommodation for you in advance to virtually any other tourist information centre in the UK. You just say where you want to stay next and the kind of accommodation you want. They then phone the tourist information centre in that area, who find a suitable hotel or other accommodation, and phone back with the details. Another thing you can do at some tourist information centres is change money, which can be useful, especially when the banks are closed. Good morning, how can I help you? I'd like to cash some traveller's checks, please. Certainly. How much is it for? $60. Do you want to go? That's fine. Right, Glasgow here, the date here, and sign here, please. There you go. Thank you. That'll be thirty-four pounds and eighty-eight pence. How would you like it? Sorry? The money. Would you like fives or tens? Um tens, please. Here we are. Ten, twenty, thirty, one, 
two, three, four, and eighty-eight pence. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. And of course, you can get information about the area you're in. Well, we'd like to see the sights of Glasgow. Can you tell us where to go? Yes, sure. Right. First of all, we have a city centre map. Um, at the moment, you're here. Mm -hmm. There are normally three main areas that we recommend visitors go and have a look at. Glasgow has all the amenities that you would expect from a big, bustling city. But it also has a strong tradition in the arts and in learning. Its university is one of the best in Britain and dates back to the 15th century. Glasgow has a fine tradition in architecture. And it's the home of the Scottish National Orchestra and the Scottish Opera and Ballet Companies. The city has several museums with very fine collections. The Burrell Collection was a gift to the city from William Burrell, a local ship owner. It includes over 6,000 works of art and a fine antiquities collection. The Hunterian Museum includes among its treasures whole rooms from the home of Charles Rennie Mackintosh, one of the founders and most important figures in modern architecture and design. It's not just his ideas of interior decor that are interesting, but also his design of basic household objects and items of furniture. Glasgow's tradition of fine architecture continues. Prince's Square is a modern centre, housing high-quality shops and restaurants. It's well worth a visit, just to see the design and craftsmanship of the building. From Scotland, it is only two and a half hours by ferry, or less than an hour by plane to Northern Ireland. The area of Northern Ireland is small. You can get anywhere in less than two and a half hours. The two main cities are Belfast, the capital, and Londonderry. You will probably think of the Northern Irish as an unfortunate people, divided by race, religion, and history. But you'll be pleasantly surprised at how warm and friendly they are. Belfast has many fine buildings and all the amenities of a big city. Londonderry, or Derry as it's also called, is a fine old city, full of history. Bally Castle is typical of the lovely bustling market towns. But perhaps the greatest appeal of Northern Ireland is its scenery. Its lakes, hills and rural landscapes offer peace and quiet, despite its troubles. ways of taking advantage of all this fine scenery. Don't worry, 
there are excellent opportunities for less energetic pursuits. The coastline is magnificent. On the northeast coast is the Giant's Causeway. Legend has it that it's the remains of a road built by a giant to cross the sea to Scotland, and nearby is the organ that he played. Just along the coast is Dunluce Castle, a romantic ruin that merges with the cliffs. You may have noticed other castles on our journey. Every corner of Britain has them, with, of course, their ghosts. But that's not a castle. It's the Bushmills Distillery, where Irish whiskey is made. As in Scotland, you can go round the distillery and try the product. Of course, you can also try it in one of Northern Ireland's many splendid pubs, like the Crown in Belfast, with its period elegance. If you're a beer drinker, try the stout, the black beer the Irish make so well. Like all Celts, the Northern Irish are a very musical people. You can hear good live music of all sorts in pubs there. A very different kind of pub with a very different kind of music. Traditional Irish folk music. good a place to end our journey as I can think of. A cosy pub, friendly people and good music.